Hey everyone, my name is Andrews, and today we are going to go over this week's Black Desert patch. A lot of things to go through, pretty good overall for this patch. I do want to mention that we did get a response from the developers about the direction they're thinking about going in regards to class balance in the game. They looked at feedback, seems like a lot of players want option two of what they gave, which was to have more forward guard in the game, less super armor. This means we should see something along those lines and some changes to classes with this coming test server patch later in the week. However, today we do have some good stuff for Scholar and other quality of life updates for the game. So we're going to go over them and then I'll let you guys know which events are starting for us today as well. If you were looking for the class balance we saw in test server last week, uh, like the Awakening Megu buff, uh, the Sage changes, Draconia changes, that's all coming for us next week. Remember to use the chapters to skip around to what you're most interested in. And let's start with class balance. We have one fix to Succession Megu where you can no longer teleport through your clone into restricted areas in the game. For Scholar, we have the Rebomb skills finally added to the game. For level 56, we have the choice of an AoE with forward guard or a mobility skill with partial forward guard. These did not change from the test server version. For level 57, you have two frontal AoEs, one with forward guard and the other with super armor, and these actually got slight PvE damage increases compared to what we saw on test server. For level 58, you have the Golden Boon skill, which is a cleanse skill to remove any attack or movement speed debuff on you for 30 seconds with some exceptions and it nullifies any attack or movement speed debuff for those 30 seconds. This is also super armor during the skill and the cooldown on the skill was actually nerfed from 60 seconds that we saw on test server to 90 seconds on live. The second skill here for level 58 that you can take is Gravity Distortion. This is an AoE around you that deals a slow debuff for 6 seconds. Depending on whether you hit something inside or outside, the debuff will be greater. This is exactly the same as the test server version as far as I can tell, so nothing's really changed there. And those are the Rebombs for Scholar. Golden Boon, level 58 Rebomb, pretty much the more interesting one out of all of them, so we'll see how it performs on live servers today. Uh, moving on for Scholar, we still have more things. We have the Black Spirit Raid skills for Scholar or the BSR skills. So Hammer Spin is going to be the 10% BSR. You have an additional attack and an increased AoE when used by consuming 10% of your Black Spirit Rage. For her 25% BSR, she uses one giant leap. This is going to give her increased total damage, jump height increase, increased movement distance, AP plus 10 and DP plus 10 for 20 seconds when using this skill. For her 50% BSR, she uses Hammer Smash. She gains two additional hits on that skill and the skill is going to become a super armor skill. For her grapple ability, Gravity's Grip has been changed from charging towards the targeted enemy to charging forward after throw attacks hitting the targeted enemy. So they have also improved hit detection on those throw attacks and now combos will be more smooth when linking with other skills. One Giant Leap has fixed the awkward animation when using the skill from extremely high areas. Hammer Smash second attack now has a faster animation. One small step now turns the camera immediately at the start of the skill. Potential energy can no longer be used with mouse to move. Gravity Anchor into attraction bugs with inclined terrain have been fixed and now combos more smoothly with other skills and can no longer be used to access restricted areas in the game. Hammerfall now combos into Gravity Blink and Reversal. They have also added the Elvia skill for Scholar, and they have fixed the issue where your Sledgehammer appeared abnormal while taming a horse. They fixed the issue where your Gravity Cores appeared invisible after comboing from Sledgehammer skills into Hammer skills. And for Hammer Throw, they fixed the issue where the Down Attack debuff was not applied when used while mounted. That's all the changes for classes this week. A big update for Scholars, of course. Let me know what you think in the comments, but we do have a lot more to get to so for items elixirs have been revamped this week 95 elixirs have now been changed to affect your party as well party elixirs have been converted into this new revamped elixir the duration of the effects has also been increased so green elixirs will now last 10 minutes blue elixirs will now last 15 minutes and all the effects will apply to you and your nearby party members if you had any party elixirs in your storage they will be converted to this new version else tiers that were used to make elixirs into party elixirs have been removed from the game so if you had any you can sell them to vendors for the same cost that you bought them for and they have also changed one of the objectives in the adventure lock so you don't need to use the alt tier item anymore items like scrolls relics forbidden books voodoo scrolls they have all been changed to 
now be a stackable item. They've also added a new inventory function called Yaz's Combinables Pouch that will allow you to take the stacked relics, for example, combine them in this pouch in this new kind of window and instantly get all of the relic scrolls at once without needing to do them one by one. This will also work for Ataraxian items for when you need to combine them for the keys. Now, this is a great change. We've been waiting a while for this one, but it is good to see it finally be in the game. Really good quality of life change. For monster zone changes, we really only have one big update for Dekia Tenkuda. No longer applies aggress for the Chaos Infused Ulutuka monster. Instead, the base trash loot from this monster and the other normal mobs has increased. For the Elite, we went from 80 to 150 trash loot to 150 to 200. And then for the normal monsters, we went from 2 to 3 to 4 to 6 trash loot per kill. And when the Elite summon message appears, the summon time for the Elite has been reduced by half. For mounts, they have added the guild improved galley. This will also have a new mechanic to make the galley go faster by having your guildmates do a mini game. That seems fairly simple, fairly easy, and at least will give you something to do as the captain sails you to your destination. You will also be helping everyone get there faster by doing this mini game. The crafting process has also been improved. You now get more products per craft depending on your processing level for the galley. You can do weekly quests to get materials as well. You can now take the green grade galley gear and convert it into improved green grade galley gear that can then be used on your galley. They have also made a new improved blue version of galley gear that can be crafted through the guild house and you can now use the life and combat tokens from guild missions to exchange for items that you may need in the crafting process. Daily quests that were once time gated have become repeatable quests. This includes the Ethereum sailboat, the Ethereum frigate quest. These normal quests we used to do are now one-time family quests and the repeatable quest instead asks for something simple like ruby, sapphire, topaz, emerald, or diamonds as an exchange for one design of your choice. And again, this is repeatable. The same has been done to the Florchestra instruments, the Marnie instrument quest, and the Forest Pathwagon quest. They have all been changed to no longer have that daily limit and be instead repeatable. For quest items, they've added a silver value to them, so you can now sell them to a vendor when you are done with the story. This is only for a few of them, however, the rest of the items will be deleted after you complete the main story. They have also changed a few quest requirements for things like Allison Energy Conversion, uh, the Ulukita main story unlock, and some other minor quest changes. For Shy, they have improved the ability to tag with other classes. The caveat is that you still cannot use your unique talent weapon as an awakening weapon. Instead, when you tag a scholar or whatever class you want to tag to your Shy, when you do the gear copy, you can select an awakening weapon in your Shy's inventory to convert into the scholar awakening weapon. For events, we have the Season of Bountiful Gathering event when you are actively gathering, so butchering, tanning, fluid collecting, lumbering, and mining, those will all count. You will sometimes get a buff. This buff is called the Blessing of Spirits, and it will increase your gathering item drop rate, life skill mastery, and movement speed for three minutes. You also regen 10 energy when you first get this buff. You can also obtain the Golden Insect Amber item that can be sold to vendors for 10 million silver and you also have double the chances to trigger the gathering minigame to obtain even more items. When you log in, you will also get the Stella's Toolbox, which is going to give you the complete set of life skill Stella tools. We also have a new login event where you get advice of Valks for playing up to an hour a day. You will also get a one-time quest that will grant you an 80 stack and the RNG advice items. And lastly, for events, we have the Sun Aura Black Shrine event. Defeat one Sun Elemental boss and you will get a rank one Sun Aura pouch. This is a one-time per family quest, so defeat either Golden Pig King, Adukshini, or Ape Changui at any level and you'll get this pouch. For the Pearl Shop, Scholar has the Carlstein set and the Divinus and Cabellia sets on the market now. And that's all for this week's patch. Pretty good one, I say. I think next week with the changes we saw in test server last week, it's also going to be a strong patch. And of course, this week, we also have the Global Labs test server patch that should let us know how extreme the changes will be for most classes. I'll have a video for you on that as soon as it releases. And that's it for this one. Let me know what you thought about the scholar changes in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.